MS test is a test framework which can be used for unit testing. It is similar to NUnit or XTUnit but has its own library. So for creating a MS test project, you can just search for MS test in Visual Studio and then select the MS test project. And I'm going to keep the name test project one. And once the project is created, we can go into the NuGet package and see what are the NuGet packages which are installed by default. It is the mstest.test framework and then the mstest.adapter which is mainly needed for Visual Studio and the microsoft.net.test.sdk. Now this one I mentioned in my previous video also, this is something we really don't need and it can cause an issue when running inside of Docker. So I'm just going to uninstall this. And I'll just go ahead and update these packages. So now for testing, what it comes with, the test class attribute, which is an attribute needed at the class level for making it eligible for testing. And then for each method, we need to use the test method attribute. Now for doing a test, it is pretty straightforward. So let's say we declare a variable here. Now for testing, we can use the assert and as you can see it is part of microsoft.visualstudio.testtool.unittesting namespace so we can do assert dot and assert comes with r equal r not equal and both of them has a generic version also r not same r same these two are generic equals fail inclusive is false and bunch of other we'll go through each one of them now the r equal test whether a specified value here it is showing float but it has 17 overload which means it will cover almost all data type it tests whether a specific value is equal and throws exception if they are not equal so that's what it does and just equals just static equals it's essentially the method which compares two instances equality now the difference between r equal is in r equal you can see there is a third parameter so if i run it it has an expected value so for example here we are expecting the value to be zero the actual is the count and then you can use a third parameter as a part of an overload which is delta delta is the required accuracy. An exception will be thrown only if the actual is different than the expected value by more than delta. So this is essentially if you want to create a plus minus error margin, this is the margin that you can provide. But for us, we can just go with this. And then we can run this test. And you can see the test project shows up. It has one unit test, test method one. Let's run this. And of course, it is successful as expected. Now, if this is one, then of course, this test is going to fail. Now, this is an occasion where we can provide a delta of one. So if we provide a delta of one, then we are saying that it has a margin of error of one and it should pass. And you can see it's passing. But here, if we are trying to compare it with three, but count is one and margin of error is only one, this time it is going to fail and you can see it fails because it is greater than what is the actual number plus the delta that we have provided so that's the main difference between equals and r equal now let's look into r not equal so r not equal checks that these two are not equal with the margin of error of the delta which is one here so in this case this should be true because they are not equal but if i make it as two now with the margin of error count is one and margin of error is one delta is one so it becomes two and they become equal so that's why it is failing whereas if i make it as one similarly it is going to fail because the actual value is one only if the value is three or above or below one this is going to be successful so we check the equals are equal are not equal next we can look into r same and for r same let's create a class here 
so you can say public class user and here we can say user is equal to new user and here we can use new user which is the expected value and user which is the actual and the third parameter is a message and the message is something to include in the exception when actual and same are not as expected so as you can understand this is not important it is just for the test console so i'm just going to skip this now if we run this method you can see that our same are failing and they're failing because they are not the same object so it is behaving the way it should the fail is something which we can use just to inject failure in the test with a optional message and some parameters i personally have never used it and i don't see a great use case for using it so that's a fail is false and is true are pretty straightforward they're just checking failure condition and truth condition is instead of a type it's essentially just checking the type so here this will be the condition and this should pass because user here is of type user if it is not if you give a string here it is going to fail because user is not of type string and is not instance of type in this case the string because user is not string this is going to be a success inconclusive is something similar to fail meaning when you want to show it's an inconclusive test you can use this and it can be without parameter optionally it can take a message and then a set of parameters if we want to use it to show in the console is null is to check if an object is null or not is not null on the other hand to check if object is not equal to null so if we just use is not null this is going to be true because the user object is not null and similarly the is null is going to fail because user object is not null so the other case will fail the reference equal determines whether the specific object instance are same instance or not and then finally we have throws exception and throws exception async so throws exception test whether a specific code throws an exception through a delegate and throws exception async also test if a specific code which is provided by a delegate action throws exception or not so if we want to use this we can use throws exception let's say comment exception and here we need to specify an action and there are six overload it has a func which where you can pass an input or action and a message and func and a message action message and parameters and func message and parameters so we're just going to go with the plain old action and here we can declare a private method throw and it is just going to throw new argument exception so here we can just call the throw method that's pretty much it now if we run this this test is going to be successful because we are throwing an exception now similarly if we do async now this one is not a await function so this is going to throw an error so what we can do is we can do a task and here we can just throw an exception so if we just do that you see this error is gone now if we run this this test is going to pass so these are all the different variables of assert that we can use as a part of ms test project so that is all i wanted to cover in today's videos just going through all the methods available as a part of asserts in a ms test project if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video